Hello everyone and welcome. Today's webinar is being recorded and you will receive a follow-up email to view the recording within 24 hours. If you have any questions, please submit them in the questions section of your control panel. We'll cover as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. Now, I'd like to introduce Peter McKee from Docker and Jim Armstrong from Sneak. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody for uh, for joining us today. Uh, this is Jim Armstrong. I'm with Sneak. I'm uh, on the product marketing team here at Sneak, working with Sneak Container and, and some of our other products here. I'm excited to be joined by Peter McKee uh, from Docker. Uh, Peter, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, sure. So I'm Peter McKee. I'm on the developer relations team here at Docker and um, super excited for this webinar and have uh, Sneak on. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're we're really excited to show you the functionality that we've uh, that we've built together here. Um, just by way of background, um, you know, there's there's several of us here at Sneak who used to be uh, at Docker, and so we're really excited to be working with our former teammates there at Docker. Peter and I happen to live, you know, just down the street from each other in in Texas terms, uh, <laughs> you know, a couple a couple cities away, but three hours isn't that far in in terms of Texas, so. Uh, really right. excited to uh, to be able to collaborate with uh, with the Docker team uh, again uh, in in all aspects here. So, without yeah. further ado, let's dive in to what we've got here. So, we thought what we would do to kick things off, just to level set everybody. I don't think Docker needs a lot of introduction, <laughs> maybe none, but just in case um, people aren't super familiar, Peter, you want to run people through what Docker does real quick. Yeah, like it says here on the screen, so Docker helps millions of developers simplify how they build, ship, and share their applications. Uh, we've been around forever, and we're really focused back on the developers and helping them deploy their code as easily as possible. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, and so for those who don't know Sneak, and Sneak probably needs a little bit more introduction, uh, Sneak has been around for, we actually just had our fifth birthday celebration uh, toast this morning. So we've been around for five years, but uh, a bit smaller, obviously, uh, than, than Docker. Um, but we started as, a, as an open source dependency security uh, company. A lot of people building their applications on, on, on top of open source packages these days. Um, and from there, it's a natural extension. As people build those applications, they're packing them up into containers to ship and, and run them. And so Sneak Container was our second product and uh, has been growing very quickly. But we're working with over a million and a half developers um, to help them find and fix those vulnerabilities in their code and in their containers and, and now in infrastructure as code uh, as well. So very, very developer focused um, for, for both of us. Um, a real quick note on Docker Desktop. Peter, you want to you want to introduce people to, to Docker Desktop for those who aren't aware of what that might do. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, happy birthday, by the way. I didn't know it was uh, I didn't know it was this morning. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Docker Desktop is the best way to run your containers locally. Um, it runs on Mac and Windows. Um, and at the end of the slides, we'll have a, a link where you can go and, go and download it. Super easy to install. Um, would uh, to get the sneak uh, features that we'll be talking about today, you need to go to the Edge channel, download the latest Edge. Um, so you also get sneak, but you also get some some extra little good little bits there in the UI. So you're able to see your local images, you're able to see log into Hub and see your remote repositories. Um, and then we also do some kind of patching together of your containers and apps. But yeah, so go download desktop. Uh, make sure you're on the Edge channel to get the, the Sneak features, um, and that will install uh, Docker, the Docker engine, the Docker CLI, everything that you need to get started with containers. Yeah, I uh, love seeing the uh, the little patch dog in the uh, in the about screen there too. A lot of new cool yeah. uh, cool new stuff in in Docker Desktop as well that I've seen recently. Like the the menus got there for somebody like me who forgets CLI commands, you know, as fast as I can right. learn them. Uh, it's great to be able to to have a, a, a Docker desktop for dummies <laughs> window that I can yeah. see and not have to remember. <laughs> uh, I'll blame it on the oh. age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so why why bring these two things um, together? Um, you know, there's there's a lot of really good um, a lot of really good reasons. A couple of things that we wanted to highlight, though, uh, Peter, you want to talk a little bit about the roadmap yeah. that you've got with desktop? Yeah. So we so we have a public roadmap, and it is the official. Docker roadmap. You can check it out. It's on GitHub. If you go to GitHub, Docker, 
uh, forward slash darker forward slash roadmap. You can see our public roadmap. And not only is it public, that that is what we use internally. Um, the product managers, engineering, all of us at Docker work off of that roadmap. Uh, so if you have a request, um, go ahead and put an issue into the roadmap. Read through the other uh, uh, features that we have in there and like them, upvote them, so we get a feel from the community of of what's um, you know what folks are looking for. And on that note, security was one of the top features that we had when we opened up our public roadmap. Uh, container scanning and security work just really just jumped to the top. So, yeah, super excited to be, you know, connecting with Sneak. Great. Yeah, I think the other big thing, um, and, you know, coming from a Sneak perspective, aside from the fact that, you know, uh, a couple of us um, used to work at Docker, so we're very familiar with the team and, and we're excited to work there. The other aspect of it for us is that, you know, both companies are very developer focused. Uh, and we want to um, make container security, we want to make application security in general, uh, as simple as, you know, everything else is in Docker. Um, and, you know, being able to do this, these scans, being able to get container security uh, details that are consumable by, um, you know, by everybody and not just by somebody who can read a CVE and, and a CVS CBS has V3 score and, you know, knows from heart how to uh, to uh, digest that thing, right? You shouldn't need all that in order to make your containers secure. And there's loads of, you know, container best practices out there and what people are supposed to do to build, you know, better, safer, you know, containers. Um, but we felt like we could take that, make it into a tool that's very consumable for people. Uh, and what better way to get it into uh, uh, in, in consumable by by container users than to integrate it directly with Docker. So, um, so that was a, a big, a big, um, you know, idea behind this for, uh, for both of us as well. So, yeah, hope everybody, hope everybody sees that. Um, the other side of this too, I think is, you know, when we, when we looked at um, what's, what's in the container market, right, there are loads of container security products out there. Maybe a lot of you have seen them, but generally speaking, what we find is a lot of them kind of come late in the, uh, in, in the process, right? So you've already shipped code, you've shipped a container, it's gone into the registries, it's gone through CI, CD, and then somewhere bef right before production, um, it gets kicked back. Uh, and, you know, it's not allowed to run because there are too many vulnerabilities uh, in there. And, uh, you know, the big the big buzzword, one of the big buzzwords these days, at least in the security world, is let's shift everything left, right? We're going to shift left. And we've shifted left on code security and application security, and now we're shifting left on container security. And, you know, we've got other things that are, everything seems like it's shifting left. Let's make the developers responsible for all of it. Um, which is not not necessarily bad. Um, it's just that it's a huge set of things to take care of, um, and without the right tools and the right uh, you know information, it's very hard to deal with, and it takes people away from doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, which is actually coding things, right, and and not troubleshooting um, you know Linux packages that are buried somewhere in a container. Uh, right. And so we felt like this is you know this is where Sneak specifically has. Um, you know, uh, our focus in, in security is all these things are shifting left. How do we get the right information to developers very early in that process? So it's not just caught, you know, very late, but something that you know about early and you can build that in as part of, uh, you know, part of the process of creating the containers from the beginning and, um, uh, and, and make it uh, much more usable to the developers. Awesome. Uh, again, this is you know this is what we what you typically see from a container uh, scan report, right? Which is at its heart, it is the vulnerabilities that are in a container. There's no denying that. Uh, the problem is, you know, I, I don't know you know how long everybody's kind of been in and around this industry. I started my career, let's just say roughly 20 years ago. Uh, <laughs> so I don't reveal my age too much. I've already made fun of myself for being old once. Uh, <laughs> but I, I worked for a security company uh, and we had, we acquired a company that did vulnerability scanning and the report 20 years ago looked very much like this report. Um, and the problem with that is, you know, we're not scanning a VM, we're not scanning a, uh, you know, a server anymore. We're scanning containers and containers are built differently than those things. The way you fix them is much different than the way you would fix a virtual machine um, or, or, you know, an operating system in general. 
Uh, and so while the details here aren't necessarily wrong, the report is intended for somebody who's doing a, a security audit or for somebody who's doing that security gate right there before production and just wants to count up how many high severity or critical issues are there. And if there are too many, then we're going to we're going to block this thing from going to production. Uh, but in terms of fixing the container issues, this report uh, is, I think, a little less than helpful uh, in terms of what it provides to somebody who's maintaining containers and is not an operating system expert and has no real desire to become a deep uh, guts operating system uh, maintainer either. So uh, with that in mind, we figured we would take you through some demos and show you how this works uh, with Docker and Sneak. So at this point, uh, Peter, I'm going to hand off to you um, to do a couple things first. Awesome. There you go. All right. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, one of the first things I wanted to show is how do you know what version of desktop are you running? Do you have Sneak installed? So one of the easiest ways to do that is to click on your whale. In Mac, it'll be up in the top, and in Windows, it'll be down in the system tray. Um, and then you can either choose dashboard or pref preferences. So I'm going to choose dashboard, and that'll open up the, the desktop GUI. I'm not going to run through the GUI today, but just wanted to show you can go, come up here to the, desk, uh, to the menu and choose About. And that'll open up the About screen, obviously. And then you'll be able to see what version you're on, what channel you're on. So it says Edge here. And then you can see the different versions of the features that are baked into desktop. But then down here in the bottom right, you see the uh, Sneak version 1.393. Uh, so that's how you find it in the GUI. You can also find it on the CLI. Um, so if you run a Docker info, this will list out a bunch of stuff about Docker and your install. But let's take a look here at the top. If you look underneath the plugins, you'll see that scan is uh, um, the plugin scan is there. So now that we know that we have scan, let me clear, um, let me clear my screen. Now we can run a, um, a Docker scan dash dash version. And that'll give you a little bit more detailed version about um, or information about uh, the scan version. So you can see here the version, the git commit, and then the provider is sneak. So that's how you find what version um, you're working on. Make sure you have scan on your on your local desktop. Um, the next thing I kind of want to look at is you you want to log in. You want to log into um, sneak. And the reason that you want to do that is if you don't log in, you you only get a limited amount of scans that you can do. You get 10. But if you log in uh, into Sneak system, and you can use your Docker ID, and I'll show that in a second, um, that then bumps your scan limits up to 200. So it's a free account. You can use your Docker ID, and then you end up getting 200 free scans. So to do that, we just run a Docker um, scan, dash dash login, and that'll dump out. This will open up your browser. It'll navigate you to this URL. I'm going to grab this URL. I'm going to open that in my browser and make this a little bigger for folks. So let's go ahead and open that up. And you'll see that it'll, it'll pop up and say, go ahead and authenticate. So hit the authentication button. And here's where you can choose how you want to log in. I recommend using your Docker ID. Usually if you're using desktop, uh, you have a free Docker Hub account. You can use that ID here. Or you can also use GitHub and Bitbucket and the, the usual SSO suspects, but so I'm going to use uh, Docker ID, and then I'll just add your, you know, put in your Docker uh, ID credentials, and now we're logged in. So once you're logged in, you can run a basic scan. So let me just run a, I'm just going to run a basic scan. I have a local um, application, Node application. You can see the the Docker file is very basic. If you're a Node developer, and don't worry too much if you're not, I'm not going to dig into the code or anything like that, but just wanted to show the Docker file real quick. Um, so setting up a working directory and pulling in our package, um, and then we run an npm install. We put all of our look code into the image, and then we're going to tell it what command to run. Um, so I've built that image already, so I'm going to do a Docker images. 
And you can see I have Docker node here on the latest. So it's super easy to run a basic scan. You're just gonna run Docker scan, and then you're gonna give it the name of the image you wanna scan. So node Docker. And so what this will do, it'll talk to the engine, which will talk to Sneak. It'll go get dependencies, it'll, it'll scan your image, and then we'll get a report here um, dumped out onto our terminal, which gives you a nice breakdown of all, all the vulnerabilities that are in your image. Let's give this a minute. We'll, uh, fingers crossed that my, my internet here goes fast. Um, it is in the middle of the day here in Austin, Texas. So well, there we go. So a bunch of people are on doing Zoom for school, but okay. So there we go. There's the basic scan. It has dumped out a lot of information. I'm just going to go pretty high level and just show a couple things, and then uh, Jim's going to deep, you know, do a little bit deeper dive. But you can see down here at the bottom that we have uh, two projects and two container vulnerability paths. Uh, and Jim will talk a little bit more about this technically, but so it's yes. going to look at the image. Yeah, go, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. So there's two things that we pick up um, in the scan. So one is the container image, as you would expect, right? That's what we've been chatting about. But this is a node, a node application. Uh, and as I mentioned before, part of what Sneak does is scans. You know, we scan for open source dependencies, and so part of the scan is detecting that well inside this container, there's a node application, and let's run through and check the um, you know the dependencies there. Uh, and so it picked up the package JSON manifest and then ran through the dependency check there. So when it says two projects, it's the container is one project, the code is the other project, and both of them happen to have some vulnerabilities in there. Uh, obviously, yeah. far more <laughs> in the container than in the in the code. Yeah, cool. Okay. So another another really cool feature I want to show really quick. Let me clear my screen again for everybody. So I'm going to do a Docker scan, and I'm going to show the dependency tree, if I can spell dependency. That's uh, and see, is that right? I think so. We'll go with it. It'll give me an error. Uh, and so what that's going to do is it's going to show you all your dependencies in, in in a tree format, and you'll see that. Um, and it's nice when you're running if you're doing Node or other package managers that in, you know you include a, a module that includes other modules that includes other modules, and you can see the nice dependency graph here in a minute. Yeah, I think too, you know, kind of going back to thinking about fixing these vulnerabilities, a lot of times the vulnerability is in some weird library thing, right? Um, you, you may not be familiar with the libraries. You, you, what you've installed, like in this case, you've in, in installed express file upload. Well, the vulnerability might be in graceful FS, right? Or whatever it, it's in. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a very simple way to kind of just picture what the thing is that I installed that that caused the vulnerability as opposed to some weird library that I don't, I don't know if that's part of the OS. I don't know if it's something I installed. I, you know, uh, so it's a, it's a quicker way to get back to um, how do I fix this thing? Right. Um, and, and again, with a container, there's, there's really sort of two main options. One, it might be in the base image, which means maybe the fix is just getting a better base image or updating the base image you're on. Or two, it might be something you installed and you just need to update it um, or, you know, Pick something else or you know decide that the vulnerabilities are something you might have to live with but you need to know where they come from in order to fix them again different than than an operating system where you would just patch things as you go right and uh and, and keep moving yeah and and sorry for all the fast scrolling there i don't think i have enough memory in my terminal to go back and show you the dependency tree but it it paused there and showed you the tree while it was scanning uh, jim should i move on to to Scan with the Docker file? Yep, yep, let's give it a whirl. Awesome. All right. So another feature is you can do a Docker scan. Let me let me dump out the help here. And we took a look at the dependency tree. And then the next kind of uh, flag or option I want to show is the dash dash file. So you can, you can tell uh, the scanner, hey, here's my Docker file. Use this, and it's kind of a hint um, to the engine to uh, give you better results. It's able to resolve different things. Um, and it, like Jim was saying earlier, it will read in, read in your Docker file and it just gives it more information. Any, any more color you want to put on that before I run it, Jim? Yeah, no, it's, uh, we use the Docker file essentially to, um, yeah, to A, to determine what the base image is, right? Like, in, you know, if you're, if you're 
deeper, have a little bit more, uh, uh, have a little deeper familiarity with containers, right? You know that there's a bunch of layers in there in the file system. Uh, and the base image tends to be the first, it is the first several layers of that image. And so it's not enough to just say, well, it's, you know, just looking at the layers by themselves is not quite enough information to, um, to really help troubleshoot issues, right? But we can go back and say, okay, here's the, here's what the actual base image is for this. Now, the other part of that, um, if this works, is that it will show you alternative base images, right? So we can go do and recommend and say, well, you're on this base image. It's either you can update and get a fresher version of that one, or here's some alternatives. But then it also helps with the additional layers on top of that. So we can relate those layers back to, not just to the dependencies that we saw in the dependency tree, but to the command and the Docker file where you installed them as well. So now you have both of those views. You have the dependencies, you know what package you installed, the high level package that um, that this you know, particular library with a vulnerability is attached to, but you can also see the Docker file command uh, by, by matching that up. So give that a whirl. Let's awesome. See what And I'll mention too, I'm going to, uh, when, when I start showing, I'm going to go into the JSON options as well. So what you're seeing obviously is uh, is useful, uh, slightly more human readable as much as a as much as a vulnerability scan can be can be human readable, I guess. Um, yeah. But I'm going to go into the JSON output, um, which is nice for doing a lot of filtering and fun things when you're uh, when you've got you know in this case I think there were almost 700 vulnerabilities um, that we detected, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. And like Jim mentioned. Let me scroll up a little bit. You can also see. Um, well, Jim, go, I'll let I'll let yeah. you describe this. That yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, happy to do it. Yeah, so <laughs> you know we've got the vulnerability count, right? There's 681 issues here, um, and we detect because we have the Docker file where we can say for a fact it's you know you this started from node 12 18 one, which is what you saw in uh, in Peter's Docker file when he showed it earlier. Now that happens to have just by itself, 682 vulnerabilities, and we only have 681 in our final container. That's because what we actually scan, and the, the, the vulnerability counts we give you is the end result of the container, right? So all the layers smashed together, which you would get in the running, uh, the running container itself. And so somewhere along the way, something that is vulnerable in the base image gets fixed. And that's not unusual. You do, you run your package managers and you do an update and, and you do upgrades and things and packages get, fixed to, to newer versions. And so what's important is what's there in that final image, the one that's gonna run. But nonetheless, we have 681 issues. We know from uh, what, what we do at Sneak is we keep track of all of these really popular Docker official base images. So Node, Python, you know, all the sort of straight distributions. So the, uh, the you know, Ubuntu and Debian and, and, and Alpine and all those kinds of really popular images. And we track what's available there um, and, and we do scans on them regularly. So we know in our database that node 12181 has 682 vulnerabilities, 23 high, et cetera, et cetera. But then we also recommend places to go from there um, that can help you reduce vulnerabilities. So really three categories of those. A minor upgrade, as you can kind of tell here, is, is sticking with that same version, right? We don't want to make a, a huge change that might break your Node app, but we can get you to a slightly better version of the image that has fewer vulnerabilities. So we go from 682 to 500. That's that's decent, right? Really important, we get from 23 to 11. So that's a that's a bigger help probably um, than, than the overall vulnerability count. Um, but we then offer some additional alternatives. So there's a major upgrade. We can switch our node version, right, to node 14, gets us a, you know, uh, uh, moves us forward a little bit there. It doesn't really help us all that much. It helps us slightly with one medium vulnerability. But then we give you a bunch of alternatives. And really, again, thinking about Docker best practices, right, they always start with use minimal base images, right, that are reasonable for what you're trying to build. And so usually these alternative images are gonna be the slimmer, slimmer versions of uh, thing you're running. So there's several node options here um, that are slim images and the vulnerability counts go way down. And that just has to do with the way these images are basically created, right? The general node images 
it, there's a ton of stuff in there because there's meant to be used for general purpose node applications. So everything in the world is crammed into them, which means you get a lot of vulnerabilities. Um, you go to the slim image and a lot of those developer packages and things are removed. Um, and which means there's going to be probably a little bit more work on your end um, to add the developer packages and the libraries and things you need to compile things back into the image. Um, but that gives you far more control over what's in there. Uh, and then if you think about sort of multi-stage builds, which is another container best practice, it's easier to rip those things out when you're doing the multi-stage. You know exactly what you put in and exactly what can come out, as opposed to you know, this image had a ton of things in it, and I'm not real sure which parts I used uh, and which parts my, my application depends on. Um, so you get very explicit with those things um, as you get to those slim images. But we classify them under alternative because they probably are going to take a little bit of extra work um, to uh, to just make sure everything you know still runs, the container still builds, and everything works correctly. Yeah, awesome. OK. I'm going to run uh, another scan, but I'm going to exclude the base. Right. And maybe while I clear here. So again, let me show you the help. So there's uh, the dash dash exclude dash base, which like it says here, excludes the base image from vulnerability, vulnerability scanning. Yep. And it also requires you to tell it the file um, for probably obvious reasons, but Jim, maybe... Uh, yeah, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'll I'll talk through it. Why don't you kick off the scan? So I'll 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 talk through it as it's as it's cool. running. Uh, but yeah, it you know the the big thing there is well we need the file because um, because we want to separate you know again think about the layered file system there separate the layers out that have the base image and let's not display those vulnerabilities. Um, and the reason for that, in a workflow perspective, is you know you don't really have a lot of control over the base image. You can choose different base images, right? So that's part of it. Um, but those aren't things that you generally are gonna go fix yourself. You might go to a different one or a newer one, um, but that's generally how you would fix the base image. The things you wanna take, take direct control over are the things that you've added to the container. And so by excluding the base, we filter out all of those things um, that are part of that base image. Um, there's, a, there's another sort of workflow thing um, with that, which is in a lot of in a lot, in a lot of environments, a lot of places we go to, they have two or three teams that will manage images. So there's a, sort of a central team that comes up with the, you know, they take the Docker official images, they build their internal company sort of golden images, right? So they'll take Docker node and they'll build my company node. And then there might be a, a, you know, from there the application teams can build whatever they want. Well, that central team is responsible for the base image. The application team, it's not their responsibility to fix anything in the base. And so why have those vulnerabilities pop up at all, right? When they're not something that, that I really can uh, really care about. Um, and so again, it's just a way of filtering those things out very quickly and saying, here are the things that I, I should be focused on and I'll let somebody else worry about those, those other issues. Cool. Uh, and it looks like you had, oh no, that was the, applications this I think if you scroll up a little bit yeah so there so we still did the full um, we still did the full test right we're still it's not like we're only testing part of the image we're doing the full test essentially what we're doing is filtering out what we show and what we count as vulnerabilities so we we scanned this image and ended up with uh, zero issues um, when we filtered out the things from that started from the base image so you know from my perspective as an end user, Maybe there's nothing I need to fix except for changing out the base image, uh, which is good news, right? Back to coding and I'll figure out the base image later. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. I think, I is there anything else you, that uh, you want me to kick it over to you? Yeah, go, go ahead and kick it over to me and we'll have some fun with, uh, some fun with JSON. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me stop sharing and... All right, heading your way. All right. Okay, good. Um, so, what I've done here, I've already run the scans uh, because we've seen we've seen the scan run now several times, and we don't need to sit and watch that run anymore. So, I ran as Peter showed you when he did the scan. Right, there's a dash dash JSON JSON option, and you get an output that looks like this. So, I've just captured that. I've dumped it out um, and, and just captured it, so we can kind of look through this a little bit and also to speed up 
some of these other demonstrations. Um, but essentially, we have a ton of vulnerability information. So as we looked at the output from the CLI, the straight CLI, right, it gives you a high level sort of summary. Here's it's a high severity, and here's here's the uh, you know the vulnerability that was discovered, and a little bit of information about the package. But there's actually far more information that's uh, that's available about the vulnerabilities. Uh, and this really helps to get to some additional sort of filtering and additional use cases that, that people tend to be really interested in. So, you know, all the standard stuff you would expect with the vulnerability, there's a full description of the vulnerability and the CVE information. Um, there is a CVSS um, score um, built into uh, most of these. There's, uh, you know, all kinds of information about the dependency paths and all those fun things that, that you saw before. So all that obviously... Um, is here. We have things like the Docker file instruction is built in here. The base image information is in here. Fix information is in here. There's exploit maturity information. Um, so lots of uh, really interesting details, interesting to maybe a certain audience, maybe not <laughs> to, to everybody, but from a security perspective, interesting. And also from a usability and sort of um, focus perspective, there's a lot of interest, uh, interesting fields in here. So um, I'm going to take you through a few of these things. So one thing that that comes up all the time is, you know, I only want the high severity vulnerabilities. I don't want to see, um, I don't want to see everything, right? Only show me the high severity uh, vulnerabilities. So I'm going to use that JSON output to do that. That severity is built in uh, into that. It's very easy to do. I've got this utility called JQ. Most of you probably know JQ. Most of you probably know JQ far better than I do. Um, but if you've never used it before, it's um, it's a utility just for you know sorting, sorting, filtering, and all those kinds of things on uh, on on JSON. Um, so I'm going to use that uh, here. Uh, again, it's just this dash dash JSON option um, to do the scan, but let me do this right. Uh, so I've got the output here all captured in this file, and if I run this scan, um, uh, it so JQ number one prettys up the uh, the JSON output for me a little bit to make it slightly more human readable, but also I filtered now to just high severity uh, vulnerabilities. So I can sort through all of those, uh, whatever it was, 600, 700 vulnerabilities and get down to the 70, I think it was, that were um, that were high severity uh, and just focus on, on those. Um, so that's one thing that people ask for uh, fairly often. Um, and we'll, by the way, we'll share uh, in the slide deck. We also posted, um, I don't think we mentioned this at the beginning, but in the handouts in the GoToWebinar panel, there's a, a, uh, a cheat sheet, a CLI cheat sheet. And all these commands that we're doing uh, here and showing you are all in there, including, including all these ones I'm doing uh, with the JSON uh, filtering. Um, we could do the same thing. Um, you know, you can combine these things as well. So we could do the exact same command exclude the base image vulnerabilities um, and then only select the high severity of vulnerabilities uh, from the user layers as opposed to you know and leave out the base image vulnerabilities i think uh, we'll just assume that one works because um, it's not all that much different in terms of how it looks here's another one um, that's uh, also fairly common so uh, again, high severity is what we want here, and that tends to be what most people want is let's start with high severity, but then there's additional details that people want to get into. So in this case, I'm using the CVSS V3 score, um, which again is built into um, built into these vulnerabilities here, right? So, you know, for those of you who know security pretty well, you probably, again, can read these things by heart. But this AV is the attack vector, um, and AV colon N means it's a network attack vector. Uh, which means you know this can be some this is something that could potentially be attacked remotely, uh, and so people generally want to know okay let's start with the high severity stuff that somebody could get to remotely, uh, and that's that AVN. So we're going to use that same JSON. We're going to filter on the high severity uh, things, and we're also going to filter to just those vulnerabilities that have a network attack vector, right? Um, so same detail here. Um, but again, we filtered it. So now we've got a smaller set of vulnerabilities um, that we want to want to focus on. 
right? And you can, you know, you can come up with all kinds of scenarios where you go through and you start to filter more and more of these things. Um, there's an exploit field field here as well. Uh, for this one, it's not defined, uh, but for some of them, you'll see exploit functional. That means that there's an exploit um, in the wild. You can use that. You can use, uh, you know, all kinds of things, anything you want really uh, from here to filter. I've come up with my own sort of mega Uber example of, of uh, filtering. So let me copy this uh, and paste it, and I'll explain <laughs> explain what what it, what it is I've done here. Um, so I've got uh, the full output, including all the base image vulnerabilities. Uh, but here's what I wanted to do, right? Give me just the high vulnerabilities. Give me just the ones that have a fix. So you see this nearest fixed in version, right? That, that's null if there's no fix. But if there is a fix um, that's published and available, it'll have a, a value in it. So I'm going to filter on just high severities, just ones that have a fix. I'm going to group all those things by the package name, so the high level um, the high level package name, not the weird, you know, under, underlying library name. Um, and then I'm going to sort those so that I get the one that has the latest fixed in versions, the most recent thing that I have to install in order to fix those vulnerabilities. And I'm going to pick that one. And then I'm going to pretty up the output because I don't really care about all this extra junk. I just want to know the package name, the Docker file instruction, if it's something that I introduced, the version that I'm running and how I fix it, right? So I'm just going to, I just really need four bits of information. Um, to get to my fix details uh, for this. So let's run that. And here's the output we get, right? Um, so I've got, in this case, now I'm down to one, two, three, four, eight, uh, eight packages um, that have fixable high severity vulnerabilities. Uh, it looks like seven of those are from my base image, but one of those is something that I installed. Uh, in my uh, in my Docker file, which is slightly different than than Peter's, I installed some extra stuff. Um, specifically, uh, I installed Vim, which is stupid, but anyway, I did it and it <laughs> generated a vulnerability. Um, but yeah, so again, you can play with this. There's all kinds of things you can do with uh, with this output to get to exactly the types of details that you want to uh, to focus on. Uh, as part of the uh, part of the vulnerability scanning, so lots of combinations between the standard options and then JSON filtering um, to get to uh, to get to those details. Um, one last thing that I want to show just before we go back to uh, back to the slides, right, um, is you can uh, uh, you can also um, as you as as Peter said before, you're logged into to sneak as part of this experience. And you don't have to do anything else. You, you just logging into sneak gets you the 200 scans per month. Uh, if you come to the sneak console, you can do some additional things. So here again, we've I've, I've actually added this, um, this application to my sneak console. So I did this by importing it from straight from the Git repo. Um, so I imported the actual code here. The difference being that you know, in this case with the package JSON, there's not a lot of problems with it, but there are two, and I can just do a fix PR, right? So I can go straight to the code and have Sneak help me fix it, as opposed to just getting the vulnerability report. So some fun things you can do there if you decide to, you know, give it a whirl and uh, and and try those uh, try those things out. Um, but that's my I'll I'll leave my shameless plugs for for Sneak uh, at that at that point. I think. Awesome. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so uh, I guess the the place where we'll leave things here, and then I'll I'll start scrolling through some questions and see what we can answer, um, is that there's more to come, right? So this is our first step. We've released it. This is Docker Desktop Edge that this is in. So it'll be in stable, you know, sort of the regular patterns that Docker has for going from Edge to stable. So we'll make sure it gets a soak test and uh, and things, and then it'll be in, available and stable. It's available on Windows and and Mac and the Edge channels today. Uh, but we are working on more. So for those of you who use Docker Hub uh, and you have, uh, you know, you're, you're storing things in private repos and sh sharing things and collaborating through Docker Hub, uh, we want to make it uh, easy for you to share those images and have that security information available there as opposed to everybody having to run their own scans all the time locally. Um, and so we'll integrate this scan information into Docker Hub as well. So you log into Docker Hub with your, you know, with your team and you'll see the images that you've shared there in your private repos and you'll have a sneak uh, you know a, a sneak information about vulnerabilities right within docker hub uh, as well uh, and of course 
with the sneak integration, you can do all kinds of other things uh, if you if you choose and want to do more of the code scans or you know import things from GitHub and other places, um, in, integrate tests into CI CD, um, and uh, and even into Kubernetes uh, if you want to. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely excited about the start of our partnership here with Docker um, and things that we have planned uh, here in the very near future. And on that. Um, we will start to wrap things up. So as Peter said earlier, um, you can download Docker Desktop um, if you're, again, it's in the edge, which is, um, I guess, Docker kind of, it's sort of a pseudo beta. Um, it's sort of a use at your own risk uh, release, right? Um, but yeah. there's a, yeah, <laughs> but there's a, there's a link to do that. Um, the other shout out I'll put in is that we have SneakCon coming up at the end of October. Uh, Docker is one of our sponsors for that. Um, and so we're really excited about that. Docker's got a session um, that they'll they'll be presenting. Uh, I know that they're co-presenting with us in another session. Uh, we're really excited to share um, you know more information about our partnership there. It's a free conference. Um, loads of other you know application security, cloud native security um, talks available there. It's completely free to attend. If you want to make a donation, you can. All proceeds and donations go to the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation. Uh, so we would love to have you uh, join us there. And if you think you have an interesting talk, um, the call for papers is still open uh, and you're more than welcome. We would love to have you, uh, you know, share your knowledge with, with the audience uh, as well. Uh, but I will wrap things up there. Peter, anything else you want to, you want to share? No, no, this has been great. And um, I know it sounds super geeky to say I'm excited about this, but I, I, I definitely am right. It's shifting the security uh, to the left down to the developer where, you can you can scan and you can fix things yourself and I'm, and then also when hub comes that integration is going to be going to be huge yeah yep fantastic so uh if there are any questions i think there's there's a q a panel uh that everybody will have on their screens if you want to ask questions in there you can um and we'll you know i've still got a few minutes we can answer those questions um uh and so we'll, I'll give people a, a chance to kind of uh, pop those in. We've got, a, we've got a couple in there. Why don't I read them off and see if we can we can yeah. answer them. But um, first one from John uh, Farrer, excuse me if, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna butcher everybody's name, so I please forgive me in advance. Um, but yeah, so is the tech running in GitHub? Um, not exactly sure what you mean by that, but no, the scanning is is embedded into uh, Docker desktop into the CLI, and then that talks with the backend systems on Sneak. Yeah. Um, but you could also using using uh, the the CLI in your GitHub Actions, you could trigger these scans in yep. your uh, CI CI CD pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, and maybe maybe I confused people. If I did, I'm sorry. But when I when when I was in the Sneak console, I imported the code from GitHub, but that's just getting the actual code itself. Now the Docker file is in there. That's a very different sort of scan. We're scanning the Docker file. We can tell you what the base image is and the base image vulnerabilities, but we're not scanning the image at that point. We all we have is the Docker file from Git. So with scanning with Docker desktop, you know, you get the full image scan and you can link up the Docker file and then get that mapping. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, Next one is, is it also supported on Linux or Docker desktop? Uh, as far as I know, Jim, it right now we're only on desktop and on the edge. Um, and definitely desktop is there for Windows and Mac OS. Uh, I believe it's gonna come to the Linux the distributions, but I don't believe it's there currently. Is that correct, Jim? Yeah, I think there's some, some analysis there. I think, uh, yeah, I think part of it is I think I think Docker Desktop on Linux is a is a pretty common thing on your roadmap too. So I don't know if we, if, if that's the the kicker or um, if it's just a matter of putting it in Linux. Oh, yeah, I, I, definitely Linux. Docker Desktop is definitely not on Linux. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, yeah, and and as far as I know, there's no plans to do that right now. But again, I'll plug the roadmap. Feel free to go to uh, our public roadmap and uh, if there's not already an issue, go ahead and add one. Um, and upvote it and get all your friends to upvote it <laughs> and then and then tweet at us but um yeah all right cool let's see let's jump move on oh i love this one um 
would it be possible to provide the URL links now uh, so that we can try and access them? And if we run into issues, you can provide help. I think that might be, I'm not sure if he um, wants to go ahead and run scans and then ask us to help resolve them. But um, the links to get uh, desktop should be right on your screen right now. Yep. Um, if, if, if you want to clarify that question, uh, Madhu, then please please go ahead and put that uh you know ask another question if you want to clarify a little bit forgive me if i if i missed the the um core of your question there but okay so is there a way to consume the results from the security test to integrate with additional tools is there an api i'll, I'll kick that one over to you jim yeah on the so within the within docker desktop um you know the intent there is really to scan local and to get those results early. So as a, you know, you want to put a story behind it, kind of it's, you know, as a developer, I want to know, you know, whether the containers I'm using and building are are safe. And so it's kind of taken from that standpoint. Um, there's a possible, I don't know on Docker Hub when we're integrated in Docker Hub, what the APIs look like for Docker Hub. I, I, I can't answer that one, but I can tell you in the sneak console. Uh, so if you, um, you know, if you use that, that you know, you've got the login to the sneak console. If you go there, um, you you can get an API uh, access so that you can integrate and you know automate scans and do other things as well. So you could definitely link those things up. Again, kind of thinking back to the workflow type of things, right? There's a lot of places where scans tend to occur and should probably occur. One is the desktop, which is, you know, Docker desktop is, is a great way to get that there. The other is where you're storing the images and that would be, you know, directly in your registry, like like Docker Hub, obviously. You wanna scan in CI, you wanna scan in other places as well. Uh, certainly those are, you know, uh, uh, extremely popular and the API is popular for that. Um, and you can do that with, uh, with Sneak. Awesome, okay, just, for the sake of time, I'm just kind of reading down through some of these and see which will be the most. Um... Thank you, Kelvin. Thanks for the presentation. Very interesting. And then he said, Peter is the best presenator ever. He didn't have to say that, but I appreciate it. He didn't say that. Uh... <laughs> uh... Oh, this is an interesting, maybe not so much a question, but a, but a comment. It said, it would be a good uh, idea to have scanning incorporated within Docker build phase itself. Um... And then he says, ignore if this is already the plan. I'm not sure. I'm not. That would be cool. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's the plan or not. Um, but yeah, you, you have any. You have any insight into that, Jim? I don't know whether that's the. I don't, I don't know. It, it is a very good uh, question, though. And that is what we see a lot with our users is very similar to what you talked about, Peter. Which is, it's you know things like GitHub Actions or you know whatever your sort of build pipeline looks like. Um, it is integrated there for sure. Um, Within Docker Desktop, you know, specifically just running the Docker build with a, you know, a Docker build scan all in one command would be very interesting. I suppose you could you could string them together, right? Pipe things, pipe one through the other. Yeah, yeah. Make it sort of duct tape it together and make it work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Here's a here's a good one. Um. So what is the source of information for your vulnerability database? Yep, great question. Uh, so a couple of things about that. One, the source of any container vulnerability database is almost certainly, there's probably multiples, but there, it's the Linux distributions themselves. So you know, Debian Alpine, and Alpine's a bad example. Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, um, and, and most of the big ones have their own uh, you know, kind of vulnerability list. Um, Alpine does sort of, um, and, and essentially, you know, there's kind of a central Linux vulnerability repository and then each distribution can also take that Linux vulnerability and say, well, yeah, that's, it's a high risk there, but the way we handle this in Debian is different. And so we think this is low or medium or something. There's a lot of intricacies there is, is the point. And um, so the main source is those distributions, but then there's a lot of uh, actual research and human effort that goes into it as well. Sneak has a, uh, a research team. So we take all these different sources, bring them together and say, okay, from this, like the base vulnerability is high. Debian says it's medium. Um, and then we add things like additional exploit maturity information um, and, and other details to help 
with prioritization of these vulnerabilities um, and, and resolution of, of those things. Uh, so it's not a single source, um, and it does take does take a lot of smart people, um, you know, some human effort to to really um, bring all these things together. So it's a it's a it's a it's a lot of things that go into that database and getting that vulnerability information. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, I think we're I think we're just just right at time here. But um, thank you everybody for joining. But I also want to say that um, there's more questions coming in. Keep keep putting your questions in. Uh, we also do a live stream uh, every Wednesday, and actually starting next month, we're going to move to Thursday. So every Thursday at um, 10 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, sorry, not 10 a.m., not 10 p.m., uh, we do a live stream on YouTube, Chad, a coworker of mine, myself, get on there, we talk about all things Docker. But uh, we're planning on having uh, the sneak folks on and um, answer a lot more of your questions, maybe do a little bit more demoing. but um, Stay uh, stay tuned to the Docker YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed. Go over there and subscribe. And I think, I, man, my kids know this. Subscribe and click the bell or whatever. But make sure you get <laughs> make sure you get notifications. Um, that way you get notified when we're going to go live again. But uh, starting next month, it'll be every Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. Central. I mean uh, Pacific time. And uh, then you then you can see the recordings later. But but yeah, check that out. We'll have the sneak folks on and answer all of your questions and talk all things security and Docker. Yeah, kick it over to you, Jim. Any yep, parting, parting words? Yeah, well, I appreciate it. We, we, again, excited about the Docker partnership. Don't forget to grab the CLI cheat sheet that's available in the handouts from the, uh, from the webinar panel, uh, from the GoToWebinar panel. Um, all the commands that you saw there today are there. You can I'm sure come up with things that are far more creative than what I came up with, but um, yeah, the, that's a handy little guide for you as well. But um, yeah, uh, thanks for thanks for everything. Thanks for attending, and we'll chat again soon. Hope to see you at SneakCon. Thanks, everybody.